Welcome to our okay recording in progress. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining our uh, meetup today. It's the Agile Humans meetup for the month of uh, July. Um, I would like to uh, welcome our guest uh, tonight. We have with us Paul Godard, and uh, he's uh, well known to the Agile audience. I would say in Serbia, we even had an opportunity to have first advanced Scrum Master class in Serbia done by Paul years ago. So uh, welcome our guest. Uh, also, uh, as usually, my name is Maria Nikolic. I will be your host today. In case you have any questions in any moment, please either put them in chat or uh, uh, we can, we, you can uh, ask the question immediately. Uh, so let's have this session as more interactive as, as we can. Um, so uh, let's not waste time for a long introduction. I think it's enough to say that uh, Paul is a Scrum trainer, Scrum coach. He's working as an independent Agile coach for teams and companies. And everything that we will talk about tonight is available and you can check on uh, a website, Agilify Co UK. So all the tools and resources are there. Um, before we move to the meetup itself, uh, as last time, if you remember, if you were with us, we will have um, our um, lottery at wow. the end of the meetup. So I would like wow. to invite you to stay until the end of our meetup. Um, our colleague Alexander from Agile Humans will tell you more about that in a couple of minutes. Um, before, before that, let's say that the topic of tonight's meetup is uh, about playing games remotely with the teams. I think that the importance of this topic is more than obvious in 2021. So uh, uh, first, I would ask Alexander to share with us a little bit uh, about our uh, lottery tonight and what will be the prices. And after that, I think Paul uh, you can either add something to this, this introduction or we can start. Okay, thank you, Maria. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our meetup. I hope you all have a great time today. And I would uh, just take a few seconds to explain the rules of the lottery. So lottery is something we do at the very end of this meetup. So please, uh, what is the first thing you should do? Rename your, uh, or write your full name and surname uh, through the rename option because I want to put your names in the lottery wheel because it's very important to have uh, clearly winners. Uh, winners at the end will get a free game of, your, of their choice on the new Age of Games smartphone application. Paul will explain everything about that. That's the subject of our meeting, meeting and winners will get uh, free access to one of uh, games, uh, Age of Games. Um, it's your choice which one you will choose. So that's it for me. Just please rename and write your full names and that's for me. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we can start. So Paul, cool. welcome again. Thanks Maria, thanks Alexander. Um, thank you everyone for inviting me. Um, it's great to be here, albeit virtually. I'd much rather be in We're Serbia. <laughs> but yeah, it's great to, great to see and hear you all again. Um, yeah, so um, I've got a bit of time today to, to walk you through some of the uh, Agile games, or I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say Agile games, but I'm going to say games that I've been playing with Agile teams in a remote setting, um, obviously, since uh, the pandemic struck us, um, what is now almost 18 months ago. So obviously, team working has changed massively and teams are relying much more on tools. But I still think, and I've always believed that playing together, playing games together um, as teams, not just agile teams, is an essential way for us to learn together. So what I've got for you tonight um, is a couple of examples, which I'm hoping you'll play along with me um, through. That's the idea, is to give you a couple of examples that work particularly well for Zoom type scenarios. Um, what I will say is um, if you are using um, the Zoom client at home, you might want to put your um, view into gallery view because that enables you to see all the other people um, on the call. Um, that's the top right hand corner of your Zoom window if you're not familiar with where it is. Um, and yeah, it's um, that will allow you to see everyone. And what I would say is that all the games that we're going to play are optional. 
Um, you don't, don't feel I'm going to force you to play any game that you don't want to be part of. But as all the games are pretty much visual games, we will need your camera on if you do want to play the games along with us. All right. So the hope is that we'll have enough people to play some of these games. Um, and I do welcome you to have a go. Um, but if you're not, that's completely fine. Um, and we can you can just leave your camera off and that's equally fine as well. Um, so I've deliberately um, tailored tonight to a more visual game scenario. Lots of the games that I play are much more um, can be verbal games, games that um, smaller agile teams might play, which involves people talking and people listening. But tonight um, I'm going to give you a few examples of much more visual games. That's the idea. Uh, if you do want to play along um, and you do have your camera there ready, um, you will also need a pen and paper at home. That's the other thing you might need if you can grab a pen and paper near you on the desk. Um, you might be uh, asked to uh, draw something, you might be asked to write something down and hold it up to the camera if you do want to play. Okay, any more invitations? Anyone like to turn their cam camera on? We've only got three, four of us at the moment. Final chance. Oh, there's, there's someone else. Nice to see you, Ivana. Welcome. Carl's joining in. Diana, there we go. They're all coming now. Here, here they come. Maya's going to join in. And Diana, nice to see you. Great stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, so cameras on and um, uh, microphones on mute is a perfect kind of uh, way to play the game. Brilliant. Right. I always do a warm up and I will explain why warm ups are essential. Um, and we're going to do a quick warm up now. This is the first agile game that um, I learned uh, back last year. Um, for remote teams, it's called Grandma's Footsteps. And if you might have heard Grandma's Footsteps before, it's kind of an old children's game, I suppose you'd call it. But it works quite nicely on Zoom. Um, and it works quite nicely if you've got your camera. You don't need your microphone on for this, but your, your cameras are good. So um, if, you, if you do want to join in with Grandma's Footsteps, I need you, if you can, to arrange yourself so you can stand up. Um, but we can still see you on camera. So if you're on a chair, it's a good chance to stretch your legs. Uh, if you've got a standing desk, even better, you've probably already stood up. Carl's done that. Brilliant. Well done. So how Grandma's Footsteps works, if you've never played it before, is one person plays the role of Grandma and the rest of you are the children, the naughty children, that are trying to get work their way towards Grandma on camera. So we, we can simulate that by basically in a moment, you, the rest of you are going to stand towards the back of your room. like that and you're going to try slowly to make your way towards the camera towards your keyboard and you win the game by typing the word boo as if you said boo to grandma into the chat window on zoom if you can see that i've just uh, done that as an example there so your idea is to try and get slowly make your way back towards your camera to your keyboard without being seen by grandma so how we simulate that is I'm going to play grandma for this. And when I look away from the screen like this, you're allowed to move. But if I look, if I, if I see you move, if I look back at the camera and you're already moving, you have to go back to where you started. All right. And it's the first one to type the word boo in the chat window. All right. Well, so we, we needed a bit of a advance of the you know, pyjama. Yeah, I know, I know. If, it doesn't, if it doesn't work at home, Maya, don't worry, don't panic. It's just it's something that if, you, if you've got the setup there, have a go. It's, it's completely optional. All right, so when I, say, when I say go, I'm going to look away, and it's your job to try and get towards the, towards the keyboard as fast as you can. You see, Carl's a long way off there. Carl's got a long way to go. Good luck, Carl. <laughs> but um, I'm about to look away for the... Oh, we've got a few more players now going to join in. All right, the game's about to start. Here we go. I'm going to look away now. Oh, Carl, far to know, Carl, you ran in. You, no, you, yep, yep, back you go, Carl, back you go, back you go. Oh, Ma Mara, I saw, sorry, Maria, I saw you. You're gonna have to go back, Maria, back you go. Yeah, sorry, you too. You've gotta be very still when, I'm, when, I can, when I'm looking, when grandma's looking, you've gotta be still. Very good. I think Maya's, someone's written boo. Maya's got there. Well, there's a few boos that have, have come in. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll I think the first boo was Nicola. So well done, Nicola. I'll give you a round of applause. Very good. Well done. So come back to your seats. Come back and sit down. Um, nice little way to get off your feet and uh, get moving around. But um, 
Yeah, it's just warming up, I think, is, a, is something I wanted to introduce because not many agile teams, even if we were face to face, would actually warm up for a meeting. Um, so again, it's particularly if you're on camera, particularly if you're spending a lot of time at home in front of the screen, not many people that I work with take the time to get away from the screen and just move around. And I appreciate not everyone's got a lot of space to move at home, but movement is a, is a great advantage to creative thinking. And that's what we're gonna come on to a bit later as to how to get those creative think, that creative thinking going. All right, thank you for that and well done. Um, thank you for playing game number one. There'll be several more of these games, so by all means, keep your camera on from now on. I'm gonna share with you my screen. Uh, with just, and I've got a few uh, slides here to walk through. Hopefully you can see that. Horrible picture of me, but um, I'll briefly explain who I am. Um, so yeah, Paul, I'm Paul, I'm an Agile coach working in the UK. I also run tra Scrum training courses and I do Scrum coaching for uh, various different organizations. All the games I'm, I'm going to walk you through tonight are all available on this um, new app I have launched just last month, Agile Games, the smartphone app. Um, and I'll give you, like I say, there's a couple of chances for a, a few of you to win um, one of these um, games before we, uh, before we end today, which will be good, good, a good bit of a, a nice prize to finish the actual event with. All right, so all of the games that you're gonna see here, again, are based on the five chapters or some of the five chapters within my book, Improving Agile, sorry, Improving Agile Teams, um, particularly the safety and spontaneity elements. Two parts of what I think are really essential for creative kind of playful thinking, particularly if you're um, for teams who are involved with planning or design, solution design, we want to try and tap into that element of creativity and safety and spontaneity are two of those key ways to do it. So I've done the warm up. So we've done that one. Um, and why are we doing this? So this is, I always start with a quote is what I was told by uh, another colleague who says, um, who runs me tips, always start with a quote. It makes you sound more intelligent. Uh, so this is John Cleese, um, who you might know from the, the Monty Python uh, franchise and series, but John Cleese um, believes that in one of his talks I was watching, he talks a lot about creativity as being not necessarily a talent or a skill or an ability we have it's more of a mode that we operate within and we need as humans we all have the capacity to be creative we just need to be able to engage that creative mode and play is a, is a great way is one of those ways of engaging that creative mode we generally feel more creative when we're playing, when we don't feel like there's a threat on winning necessarily or losing, when we feel that ideas and the amount of ideas is a joyful thing, is a playful thing. And why is that particularly useful? And I'm taking it back into an agile context here, but um, why do you want creativity? And this is the Kinevin framework, um, like a bit of complexity theory in terms of where an Agile approach is particularly useful. And we spend a lot of our time within Agile teams within what we call the complex domain, the top left there of that uh, framework, where our, our approach to a complex problem is one around experimentation, one around um, trying out ideas and where we want to experiment and try, playing with those ideas and being creative is a way to give us multiple options, give us multiple different potential outcomes. So that's particularly why an agile approach is useful to us. And that's particularly why creativity and being playful is a useful um, process to go through if you're working within that complex domain. Okay, so here comes another game. Now, all of these games that I'm gonna walk you through with now are, uh, what I've part of my uh, one of the decks within my app called the Sprint Planning Kickstart, and you can see these were all originally kind of, um, and they still are physical uh, card-based decks, which are now digital within the app. But um, all of the ones I'm selected for us to play tonight are within that um, Sprint Planning Kickstart deck um, because they're visual and they're great ways to play around with a visual tool like Zoom. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Uh, and again, I can see you all again in gallery view, perfect. And I've got a little game for us to play taken from, which I've pre-selected from my uh, Sprint Planning Kickstart deck, um, which I'm just gonna read it. The idea is that I have a card, which I pulled out the deck. I've shuffled, shuffled the deck and picked one out at random. 
I'm just going to read you this card, and this is the game we're going to play next. Here we go. Right. Each player must draw a person in this meeting. All right. So you need to grab a pen and paper at home, and you need to be able to look at the camera close enough. You can see it doesn't matter who it is, by the way. And you're not, this is all anonymous. You're not going to actually write down who you've drawn, but this is an opportunity for you to draw someone else in this gallery view. All right, just to test, um, just to play around with your drawing skills. And it says here, we need to give you, uh, how long is it? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Three minutes, three minutes, we have to do this. I will time it for us. Three minutes, grab yourself a bit of paper at home, pick someone else, or someone else you can see. If, if you can't find anyone, pick me. Uh, I don't mind being drawn and have a go. Just do some drawing on a bit of paper. Away you go, three minutes. Hey, Paul, can you be still? I cannot draw. Sorry, yet. I'm moving. I'll have to re remain really still. I'll, I'll stay the camera. Right, 90 seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Okay, and that's, that's three minutes. Pop your pens down. Now, again, all of this is completely optional, but um, you don't have to write down the name of who you drew. Um, but if you'd like to share it, you can hold it on in front of the camera if it, if it just about comes out. Get it nice and close so we can see it. Very good. Well, some real artists, we're very good. Excellent. If you've got a virtual background, Alexander, it might, it's, yeah, it's quite hard to spot. All right. I will do that, I will sort that for on. <laughs> okay, so um, feel free. And all I ask here is any, any feedback on that? Any, um, any thoughts? What pros, what thoughts are going through your mind? Anyone like to voice those? You gave us too much time. Too much time? Yeah, it would be more interesting if you said in 10 seconds. 
Okay, well, you, we, you might be surprised. There's some other games that are much faster. Um, but yeah, that's that's a three minute game. It's interesting why you, yeah, yeah, why you thought, why was too much time a bad thing? Because you start adding the scope, you know, like background, invent things around. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's a possibility you might, you know, overdo this and there's that it's not the game is written really not about the result and what's that's what i'm trying to, to what what else do you think is going on there what's the what's the benefit of a game like this suppose it it focuses you on their activity doesn't it on engaging with people yeah so it encourages you to look at other people yeah, to, yeah. To know, and by slowing it down a bit you might notice something about you know it's um someone else particularly if you imagine it's a bit of a, a different setting here because we're doing this in a group of what is it 25 uh, in, attendees so in a team setting this would be a much smaller audience and normally on the card it suggests you look at the person to your left so you'd be you know you'd be uh, pairing up and trying to draw someone who's, who's directly in front of you you'll see different things uh, on camera that you would do wouldn't you wouldn't do if you were face to face but it's i think it's from my point of view is this is um, a good example of showing your vulnerable side here so as an artist okay now um a lot of people that i i work with that i've come across how oh, i'm not very good at drawing the instinct is it's not i'm not good enough at drawing but by being prepared to show something that you have drawn um gives it, it increases that sense of internal vulnerability i'm sharing something that perhaps isn't great with something that someone that i work with and I'm willing to, you know, we're all, because we're all doing that, we're all drawing um, and none of the drawings are going to be amazing, but it's not about how good the drawing is, it's about how much we're willing to share with each other, how much, how vulnerable we're willing to be with the people around us. All right. And hopefully. And it's about empathy. You, yeah. you think of that person and what might she or he is thinking and um, all this. So you put Possibly. yourself into the other side. Yeah, possibly. And again, so Dubai, you're almost giving permission to, to study that person a bit more, in turn to, to, to look a little bit deeper into their facial expression, to, you know, into, into their, their features. And I think that in itself is quite a brave thing for teams to do because they never normally have to stare at each other. So, but it gives it a playful element that we're just drawing portraits. We're just drawing um, a little um, silly three minute drawings of each other and sharing them at the end of it. So to, to give you um, a little bit of theory on, on my theories on this, I'll share my screen with you again. Um, I think this is a good example of, of how to creativity and, bit and playfulness is largely about increasing safety. And this exercise in particular is about showing your vulnerability. It's the base, the base of that triangle there. Uh, which this comes from the five dysfunctions of a team, a book by Patrick Lencioni, where he talks about the core uh, root cause of all team dysfunction is this absence of trust or this sense of invulnerability that I'm that I'm perfect. So the idea of showing a three minute portrait and like you said, uh, Maria, that maybe a shorter time frame again would actually increase that sense of uh, imperfection. Gives us this opportunity to share something that isn't great about ourselves or to share something that makes us feel a bit vulnerable because people might give us feedback on our drawings or how we've drawn or, or how we think people think we look if we're looking at our own portrait. So that for me, that's a big part of, of how why playfulness starts is people have to feel safe to play. It's a bit of a catch 22, but we have to play in order to feel safe. We have to be comfortable with playing in order to, to feel safe. Carl, did you have a question there? Or was it just a hand up? Uh, I've got a question. Sorry, there's Mike. Uh, I just wanted, could you explain the things down the side of that triangle? Yeah, so it's, it's the, it's the, kind of the yeah, it's the, um, it's how that might manifest itself. So in, if, if you're looking at the absence of trust there on the bottom, how that manifests itself in a team is this sense of invulnerability that people appear perfect. Okay. The fear of conflict, what you, how that manifests itself in a team is a sense of artificial harmony, people just getting on because they, they want to get on. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 
it's kind of had the 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 sim the um yeah the symptom of the cause if you like okay good let's move on another one <laughs> this is a bit different um and this is testing a slightly different creative element here a bit different more of a, a different play playful element um and we're going to use an additional tool for this one i haven't used before so i'm being brave now we're going to use something called a uh, mentimeter and some of you used mentimeter before it's basically an, an online um cloud generated tool basically i'll send you a link in a moment you can put your answers online and your answers hopefully if it all works will appear on on screen but I'm going to read out the uh, the challenge first, or the uh, again, it's another, another one of these sprint planning kickstart cards. Um, normally we do this in pairs, but as as we can't do pairs online, we're gonna um, we're gonna go for this for individuals for now. But basically, um, I'd like you to write down as many different alternative uses for a house brick as possible in the next three minutes. So I'll just repeat that. Uh, write down as many different uses for a house brick as, as you can in the next three minutes. All right. So I'm going to try, if I can, I'm going to send you a link, which I can put in the chat window, I believe, which you should be able to click on. I think I might need to present this in order for you to see it. But that um, should... If you click on that, you should be able to add some options in. There we go, they're coming through now. I'm timing this now, by the way, three minutes. Feel free to look at the Zoom because there's some of those options have gone up. If anything there inspires you to think of something else. I think uh, I think it was limited to maybe 10 choices, but you can, if you re-click the link, you should be able to add some more and if you can think of other things. Okay, about 60 seconds left.
Final 10 seconds. Okay, there we go. Excellent, thank you for that. So um, again, so yeah, you should be able to see on the Zoom screen all your different uh, suggestions there. Some very good ones. Any particularly surprising ones? Have a brick read through. Anything that you think? Never thought of. Never thought I could use a brick for that. We've got a bike stand. As a plate. Many restaurants do use bricks as plates. Very good. Breaking a lot of uh, destructive things, breaking things, breaking <laughs> as weapons and breaking windows. Very good. Excellent. All right. So why do we play that game? What's what do you think is going on there? What's the benefit of a game like that? Any thoughts? Learning about other people's way of thinking, different patterns. Yes. Yeah. Different so ideas. learning about learning a bit about team, um, what your team's uh, ideas are and where they're coming from. Good. Uh, create creativity creative sort of. thinking yeah oh. yeah so it was largely about creative thinking and this um these are kind of old um research-based tests in terms of um how many uses for a paper clip can you think of how many uses for a cardboard box can you think of um and basically trying to stretch individuals into to trying to think about more diverse ideas and it's interesting in terms of just going through practices like that and and how the brain slows at various times. And what I noticed is, and, and what you might've noticed is that the first few ideas might've been quite fast, quite rapid, the obvious ones, like you'd use it to build a house um, or you'd use it to um, you know, build, build things or to, to store things or to, to, as a weight to put, to put something underneath to keep it down, to, to, keep, um, to use the weight of it. So what tends to be a bit slower is the more unobvious choices the more unobvious uses of a house brick which do tend to take a bit more discussion and a bit more time so these games are there to try and help promote that and trying to stretch people's thinking just a couple of um thoughts on this from me to share with you uh based on my uh my experience this is what i how i like to talk about untrain the brain so a lot of the, the ideas that we might rule out, if you, again, if you can imagine this may have been, this might be in a more of a team-based setting or a, um, a scrum team or an agile team workshop, we might screen some of our, our ideas initially for one of these, any of these three reasons, or maybe all of these three reasons. The first one is psychotic thought. Will my colleagues think that I'm bonkers? I'm mad if I suggest this. We do tend to screen a lot of those ideas if we think our teammates will judge us for, for being um, insane, you know, just being uh, ludicrous. That's a ludicrous idea. So we might not say it. The second one there is obscene or, or um, a, a socially unacceptable thoughts in terms of uh, do, do I really understand what my team determines as, um, as an OK word to say or an OK idea to have organisationally? And the third one there is it's not creative enough. Sometimes we just won't write something down because we don't think it's original enough, it's new enough, it's, it's innovative enough. But sometimes the idea of, of playing together and being creative is just about connecting other people's ideas. And we get a lot of joy from actually piecing together other ideas that people have into a new, better idea. So sometimes our role as facilitators, if we have that role as scrum masters, it's just there to really help people connect their ideas together. The other element of this, um, which really does come out, particularly in this exercise, is this notion of uh, diversity of thinking, diversity of ideas. Um, and this is a good uh, model here, which from Sam Kaner's book um, on um, the facilitator's guide to participatory decision making, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, but in that book, Sam Kainer talks about what he calls the diamond model of participation and something which is quite interesting called the grown zone. And I'll walk through this with you. So from left to right, if you start with a problem, you end up with a solution. 
your general, what you're trying to encourage across that time is a diversification of ideas. The first few obvious answers to what a house brick is used for are those first few idea, ideas. It's what we've always used bricks for before, and we're just naming those things. Then we start to get into the more creative thinking where those, that, those, that diversity of ideas is starting to broaden. And what Kainer actually calls uh, an audible point in that meeting or workshop you might get to, where we observe something called the groan zone, because you will hear somebody groan. Now I appreciate on a Zoom call that might be quite hard if you're muted, but you could probably detect it from people disen disengaging from the creative session because they're thinking we're too far away from a solution here. We're never gonna find an option that works. And that's the point within that process where we need to start consolidating our thinking and narrowing down our options as we get towards a viable solution. But what's interesting is that many teams, tr because the grown zone is quite an uncomfortable place to be, they avoid it. And what we're saying here is that to, to be creative, to be playful, we do actually need to um, engage with that grown zone, get to that point where we think we're a long way away, because then we have explored all the potential opportunities that we might have. Okay, but it can be quite uncomfortable as a facilitator, as a participant. So, just a few um, summary, uh, kind of uh, a few summary points here on creative thinking techniques and all of those games that we've played um, are really there to, are you normally playing those games typically in a sprint planning scenario or any kind of solution design scenario where we're trying to encourage people to think differently about the problem or the sprint goal that they're about to, to, to work with. A few uh, helpful, hopefully helpful bullet points here. Get rid of the obvious is my first option. Get everything down on the table, which is in terms of um, something that we can already assume we, we, we'll do that um, anyway. It's an obvious solution. Get past the logical and the obvious. Force random connections. So um, in a creative session, I might say, how can, um, how can something obvious, how can this, this set of Air, uh, Apple AirPods, how can that help us solve this problem? Or how could uh, a tub of Vaseline, how could that help us solve this problem? Introducing random elements to try and get the team to think, to move away from the obvious type of solution. Um, invert the problem. This is an interesting one. Um, how, what, could, how, what could we do to make this problem even worse? Which doesn't sound particularly helpful, but it's actually easier sometimes to think about the destructive things to do, the way that things would break because we're quite problem focused. So thinking about all the things that could go wrong and then just simply flip that. How could all those wrong things, if we inverted those, turn out to be positive things or turn out to be potential solutions to that problem, actually make it better rather than make it worse? Change the perspective, literally asking a team, how would someone else, how would a different team solve this problem? How would uh, Captain America solve this problem? Um, it just helps suspend the current situation and trying to get into a different person's or a different mindset a different literally looking at the problem from a completely different angle different perspective and as we've been talking about increasing a sense of safety slowing down um, encouraging people that it's not always about the, the speed at which you find the answer if we want a creative process in an experimental phase of a project we actually do want to encourage the sense of slowing down more mindful thinking and removing stress taking away a lot of those other uh, distractions that might be um, preventing us from a, a clearer thinking. Okay, what I thought I would do now is very briefly just give you a quick uh, view of the Agile Games app, because like I say, we do have a, f a couple of free options for, um, for some lucky people at the end of the, the call to win. So um, I've mentioned mostly the games from the Sprint Planning Kickstart, but I thought I'd just quickly show you how the app works and how all the other games that we have on there. Um, so if I stop sharing that now, I should, if all this works well, I should be able to share my iPhone.
Bear with me. If the wonders of, of Zoom technology works. There we go. You should be able to see my phone now. Yes. You can see my yes. phone. Brilliant. It's working. Yep, okay. yep. Good stuff. All right. So, um, obviously, this is the Ask version available also on Android, but I, I will very quickly just explain to you. Um, we've mentioned the, the, the sprint plan and kickstart there, um, which is basically obviously aimed at creative exercises, games to help teams start uh, the first few minutes of their sprint planning session. Uh, the games that we played here, I think I've got mentioned here, we've got portraits. That's the one we did this morning. Sorry, this afternoon. And we've got uh, the house brick. So those are the, uh, the two examples we've got there. We've also got, so basically I've got three games for three meetings within the Scrum Framework. We've got da the Daily Stand-Up Challenge, which is uh, a way, a means of basically a short energizer for the, uh, the first meeting, the Daily Stand-Up or the Daily Scrum of the day, or the, um, just to energize that, get a sense of fun. Those games are mainly based around the idea of listening or observation-based skills. So much more around uh, verbal interactions about, about voice and listening interactions and engagement. So we have a couple there for that. Um, we also have the retrospective lexicon. Now the retrospective lexicon is a, um, basically a set of uh, vocabulary cards that you can introduce into your retrospective to try and increase levels of emotional intelligence into your, um, into your retrospective. So not really a game as, as such, but more a structure that you can follow, that you can try and encourage people to think uh, about a particular event. So we've got some adjective cards around how would you just, what events would you describe over the last two weeks were, that would be covered by the word severe? What's happened that you say would was severe? We've also got uh, emotion cards. So cards, how would you do, which of those events um, would come under the category of satisfaction. Which of those events gave you satisfaction? And then we also have some uh, action cards. Action cards are there to really try to help you um, decide what to do next. Which of those events, which of those uh, outcomes should we be trying to discourage us from doing again? So just trying to put a little bit more emotive language really onto retrospectives. And I, I designed that game really to try and get teams away from the very boring, the mundane, um, mad, sad, glad type retrospectives to try and get some more, um, more emotional language into the retrospective meeting. The other one I wanted to walk through was um, the side cards. So I've got them, you can see them there on, the, on there, but um, I was gonna basically, I'll do this uh, on PowerPoint instead of thing, because I've got a, a, a card here to show you. And obviously there is a free, free uh, planning poker deck within the, uh, the app as well. The side cards were a game that I, um, I, um, I created with another um, trainer called Jeff Watts. And Jeff, you might have heard Jeff's book and um, read Jeff's books on Scrum Mastery. And we both thought it's interesting. There's a game here around, well, many teams that we work with don't really have a process for making decisions. It seems like we should be able to decide. It seems like we, should, we need to be able to decide as agile teams but many teams don't really have a process for it. They don't really diversify before they decide because of the uncertainty around making decisions. Many teams tend to jump on the first decision that's mentioned. So a scrum master might say, should we do, should we size this as a five? And it's easy to say yes, it's harder to say no. So me and Jeff came up with basically, it's, it's a very similar game to planning poker. If many of you have probably played planning poker. But basically, it's planning poker for making decisions rather than for estimating. So we have gradients of decision there. We have decisions that, so if someone makes a proposal, I can deny that. I could basically vote with the card that says deny because I can't support that idea. It in some way offends my own personal values. Um, I don't, it's, it, this is going to be a bad course of action for us as a team as well as for me as an, an individual. So that's quite a strong objection to that particular idea. All the way through to an endorsement, which is kind of the other end of that scale, which is, this is a great idea. I, this, I wish I'd come up with this idea because I think it's the best idea that we've had. And I think we should do this now, we shouldn't wait. 
but there are it's not that binary decision making is not yes or no it can be i'm okay with that idea but i need a bit more information it could be um i've got not really got an opinion on this <laughs> honest, I'm, I'm happy to concede because i'll go with what the team thinks but i'll def defend the team decision uh, or I need a bit more information. There's, 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 there's different levels of agreement. We don't have to decide straight away. And this is a, a game to really give teams that kind of uh, flexibility and that, that process of how we can go you know, sensibly and methodically make a better decision as a team. There are some principles there. Again, that's, they're mentioned within the, um, the game as well, within the deck of cards there. Um, we lend our ears to others, so we're looking for, we're trying to actively bring people into the, the uh, decision-making session. Um, we're lending our voice to others, trying to bring people in, not shut them out. Uh, we debate internally, but we support each other externally, I think is a nice way to summarise what a great team is trying to do. We're happy to argue amongst ourselves, but when we've made a decision, we will support each other outside this room or outside this Zoom call, whatever it might be. Our decisions are values based, um, so we, we value each other as human beings in terms of uh, we won't uh, deliberately offend um, any of our personal values. Agreement does not mean unanimity, so we don't have to get everyone's um, complete support for a decision. We can have gradients, like I say, we, need, we basically need to get to concede or above. We don't need everyone to be endorsing the idea. We can't get 100% of what we want 100% of the time. So we're, we're willing and we're listen, willing to listen to the team's view rather than my own perspective about what I want. And we're trying to avoid the sense of compromise, picking a card that nobody else has picked because that's normally a sense of weakness in terms of, we're, because it's too difficult to decide, we're gonna go with, we're gonna defer that or we're gonna in some way compromise the decision and make a weaker one, make a weaker version of that proposal. So again, that's another game uh, within the actual app itself, which is called Decide. Um, so what I was going to, um, what I normally do at this point is uh, one of two things. So we can, we've got a couple more games we can play and literally I have the, the remains of the, the, the sprint planning deck here, which I will literally just flick through um, and let someone basically play another game. Or I can take some questions. Uh, it's completely up to you. What would you like to do? Would you like to play another game? Or would you like to do some questions? This game is good. Game's good? Yeah. All right. Who, who's shouted? Is that Maya? Is that who's shouted at game? Yes. Tell me when to stop, Maya. Stop. All right. Okay. All right, here we go, interesting one. All right, so this is called 10, so you need a pen and paper again for this one. You need a pen and paper again. Interestingly, uh, Maria, this is one that you suggested. This is called a 10 second scribble, 10 second scribble. Um, each player has just 10 seconds to draw the word below, and I'll tell you that word in a moment, but you have to use your non-dominant hand. So put your pen or pencil in the other hand, and you're going to draw the word that I say. You've only got 10 seconds. So I need to be very hot on my stopwatch here to make sure you, nobody uh, breaks that time limit. I'll have a go as well, whilst trying to time it. All right. Are you ready? I haven't got the pen in the wrong hand. The word is guitar. Go. And stop. That was actually 15 seconds. So that was too slow. Hold them up to the camera. So this is your non-dominant hand. Mine's a, there we go. Very good. Some of you have gone for much more of a kind of a banjo rather than a guitar. That's good. Excellent. There we go. Again, that game. Let me just read this all on each card. There's a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a learning point. We tend to fear that our efforts will be judged by others if we underperform. 
Increase safety within the group by sharing your drawing with other people and encourage others to share theirs without passing judgment. There we go. We've got time for uh, one or two more. Let's take that one out to make sure we don't do that again. And now, um, who's going to have a shout out this time? Let's go to Maria. Tell me when to stop, Maria. Oh, this one's good. Okay. It's another drawing one. Um, this is called Draw an Emotion. Interesting. All right. Each player must draw an image that reflects the emotion below in three minutes. So it's a three minute game. That emotion is envy. Envy. The player reading this card will also be the timekeeper. Um, and watch that the time box is complete. Each player will, will hopefully share their image with other players. Three minutes to draw your interpretation of the word envy. Away you go. That's three minutes. Again, completely optional, but feel free to show, share what your drawings are. Very good. So the, um, the thought here, the learning point here, um, envy, in the long run, a deeper understanding and awareness of emotions allows us to develop empathy with other people that we are designing solutions for by being able to see things from their point of view. So I think it's, I'm sure I'm not going to, I'm not here to analyze your drawings and that's not the point of the exercise, but it's interesting as to whether we drew other people um, in terms of whether we drew people, whether we drew objects, or we, we, do we trying to look at 
and I, I found this a lot within the teams that I've coached is this we tend to a lot of the teams particularly in software tend to be quite emotionally um, binary either we're happy or sad or is things are good or bad but trying to widen that emotional vocabulary is great not just for empathy with your customers and to try and help development teams understand and experience what develop um, what your customers are trying to achieve but also each other so we can start to recognize what envy or what um, happiness or what joy or, or pride might look like or how it might manifest in other people that we're working with within our team on a daily basis and I think if we can start to play with those emotions a bit more then that might help also strengthen that sense of safety and teamness for a team on an ongoing basis. Oh, do we have a, a time for a question maybe? Sure. Okay, I, I have uh, one, basically. If you can share with us your recommendation, tips, whatever. So either if the team is new, newly formed, or if the team is uh, new to games, yeah. how do you usually approach? So do you explain the, the purpose of the games or you just start playing? How, how do you, you, you said something about Catch-22. So how do you make them feel comfortable to play and yeah. uh, engage them, especially online? So I think any, like I tried to do at the beginning of this, is that um, any of these things I'd also, or, always say are optional. Okay. Now, if you get if you get a hundred percent of your team that say they don't want to play, then obviously that's probably a not a great time to 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 force the fun on people. But you, what you what normally happens is you might get a couple of people that are perhaps a bit more resistant or perhaps a bit more um, hesitant. And I always see those as coach, potential coaching opportunities as to why those people don't feel that they want to get involved or don't feel they want to, to, to play a part. And obviously, I would probably choose games, just a way of sometimes not trying to um, hide it, but the word game can be seen sometimes as frivolous or time-wasting or vulnerable, especially if, if the game is going to in some way expose something I'm not very good at or something. Thing. Or, or particularly if there's no um if there's a sense of winning and losing if people think be less less keen so i would always um try and create an environment where the emphasis is on enjoyment and playing rather than winning and, and or losing um and just pick your games. What I would say is pick your games carefully and perhaps build up to things that are a bit, that are a bit more of a stretch. Um, but well, yeah, what you will hopefully, it's a bit like, I suppose it's a bit like a family is you, you know, you, the reason why you play games at, on holidays or you play cards at home is that you're trying to create a sense of safety where people feel they won't be judged for the results that, that occur. And people feel there is time within our calendars to do this because we see value in it. But yeah, I appreciate it. it's not always for everyone. And I might look at those for coaching opportunities. But um, yeah, it's uh, I might look at other ways of exposing some of those things that aren't necessarily so game focused. Thanks, Paul. I think Carl, you had the hand, right? Yeah, it was the same question, really. You know, how do you do you always it was just similar. So do you always use games or do you always use a you know an icebreakery type thing or a Kickstarter. So, yeah, um, so that the whole um, I wouldn't always use games. So it's just even things like um, using Mentimeter, like like we used tonight. That's because it's less uh, verbal, especially when you've got the safe. You've got the safety of a camera. You can even have a camera off of that. Yeah, you can basically engage people with words, <coughs> typing words on, <coughs> onto a into a voting uh, mechanism. And you can even scale it back. So you can play a lot of games just through Slack. You can play word-based games through Slack. And they will obviously they will push different levers in terms of your your they're testing different skills of, of um you won't get quite so much obviously listening and observation skills, but you are still emphasizing play, playfulness. Just Word association is a simple one. Just doing word association on Slack. Someone types a word in, you've got to keep that thread going as long as you can. 
right. um, with associating words to, to the previous words. And just just doing that once a day after the daily stand up might, you know, might be a sense of, of playfulness. And what, before you know it, you might get a sense that this team is starting to enjoy a playful element to their work. Yeah. Having toys, <laughs> this is probably more of a face to face thing, but in our planning sessions, we would always have Lego in the room, always just to not um, not to use, but to basically allow people to fidget with. Um, because you're trying to reward the sense of, of playfulness, reward the sense of um, of creativity. And there's little things like that that you can be doing and, and, and drawing uh, is, a, is a great way of having a whiteboard open on, on um, Zoom and just letting people doodle um, for the five minutes before a daily stand-up starts. It's creative. It's still exercising those creative juices, even if we don't necessarily pl apply it into a game format. Okay, thank you. That's all right. I'll just pop up my last slide, slide and I'm quite happy to take any more questions that people might have. Um, if any of you did, and again, if you did want to download the app, which is free to download, by the way, but um, obviously the, the content, the games are all paid uh, purchases. But um, particularly if, if any of you are lucky enough to win the lottery at the end of this session, um, you will need to have an account on the app itself. So can I go ahead with a question? Go for it. The app is downloaded already. Oh, brilliant. Well done. <laughs> Check it out later. Thanks, uh, Maya. Question is, uh, what is your stance on multitasking, you know, wandering eyes and seeing people kind of being in and out and... How, how, what is your position there? Do you try to draw them back in or you kind of just accept it or? So just tell me a bit more. So people that are disengaging from the session or how do you mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's multitasking. Yes. You know, you can't really see what they're doing. They're kind of looking at the screen, but you can see that they're not really, you know, there. Um, and I, I'm quite... Um, um, like I like them to be to participate, to be present, to be there. But uh, yeah, so I just wonder what is your uh, general. Um, yeah, I was I was speaking with this with a colleague last week. It's interesting because I think I think without trying to look at both sides of this, um, Maya, I think there's a, there is a benefit here, right? So I think we may well have got better at multitasking during this pandemic. I'm not saying we've completely um, transformed the human brain within 18 months, but I'm, as, as we all know, we've, um, and I've, I'm guilty of this, that you're on a Zoom call um, and you're also writing an email or whatever that might be, or you're also tapping messages or checking your calendar or whatever it might be. I do know one person told me last week that they've been on two Zoom calls at once on two different devices and managed to maintain the, the perception of presence in, the, in two different meetings and also answering questions. It's like me being on two meetups now. I'm, I can address you, do an exercise and go and, and to switch my microphone off then and switch it Yeah, so it's, um, I think it's possible. I, yeah, I don't think it's, it's perhaps uh, best use of our time. I, as a facilitator, I tend to take it a bit more personally now. I think that if people are disengaging, that's on me to make people engage more or to, to, to make an environment where people want to be part of it or want to be part of the process. So being creative around um, timings, around the length of meetings, around the frequency of meetings, around um, cameras on, cameras off, um, use of verbal or, or Miro or mural, whatever you're using, but trying to, so add a sense of variety, I think, is what gives people a, or will spark people's attention. And something's different here. I, I need to tune in. Um, I heard another interesting technique of um, a colleague uses of basically we are very we are very good at spotting when our names are being used. <laughs> so um, we're quite good now at cosmetic listening until the point where we hear our name and then we're likely to switch on 
So doing things, little facilitators tips like, uh, we're gonna do an exercise now. And um, uh, Alexander, I'm gonna come to you before um, at the end of this, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Just little things like that will probably get one or two people to actually switch on that little bit more for the entirety of that exercise because they know that they're going to be asked a question at the end of it. So there's little jolts like that you can do as a facilitator to try and bring people back. Um, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, that's how I kind of summarise it. I don't think there's, a, there's an easy fix to it, unfortunately. And I, I was lucky enough last two weeks ago to go back to a face-to-face -face workshop and it was amazing. <laughs> the levels of engagement. Um, and I know that we're, we're very lucky here in the UK because we're a bit further on with our vaccine programme. But I had it's only three, four people in a room, in a real room with real people. And I think the levels of engagement were just, I wasn't, I don't think it was that much more productive, but people were just that much more interested and in tune because there was no other distraction. We were just there with post-its and sharpies and it was a really nice feeling <laughs> nice, nice. I, I had the same uh, this week uh, uh in a in a office in a in a meeting room and the person was uh showing that they agree with me and i said well you agree with me and then i realized i didn't have this read of the body language for a year <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very difficult to do online. No, I think, I don't think we'll, um, I think we've perhaps come, become a bit numb, but I think you'll be surprised at how quickly those skills will come back because it's, you know, it's thousands of years of evolution that, you know, we were naturally able to detect the smallest change in body language that obviously you can't spot on camera, but that will come back as soon as we, um, we have the chance to, to be back together face to face. Thank you. That's all right. Any other questions? Yes, it's not. Yes. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Was that the question? Yes, can you hear me now? Very, very, very quiet. Yeah. Can you can maybe you games for new scrum teams? Was that is any games for new scrum teams? Yeah, I guess it's connected to yeah uh, phases of. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, yeah, that's right. Headphones are really poor. <laughs> that's all right. I think um, new scrum teams particularly have to work a lot. I would always start with safety-based games. And even like, like Carl suggested, if, if the games are too much of a stretch, um, just um, basically any exercise really which helps us talk about our own story and our own... Um, our own emotions so there's a lovely exercise it's not really a game but called journey lines that i know again some of you will have done uh, with me in the advanced scrum master course but journey lines is basically you tell your story that each team member tells their story of their career or their journey to this point based on previous jobs previous companies previous schools or colleges whatever they've done but basically they tell their story and for me, um, telling your story is a great way to, to get a better sense of people's strengths and their weaknesses. That's a good one. Um, I do another one called Anyone Who. Um, so again, it's, it might be a bit scary for a newer team, but um, basically in a retrospective, Anyone Who is a game where you stand up or you basically share um, something that's happened in the course of the sprint that you'd like to share with someone else. So anyone who um, went out for lunch during the sprint last, last you know, in the last two weeks, and maybe someone might put their hand up or send, you can do it on Zoom. If someone might turn their camera on or wave or someone that shares that experience with you. And you just encourage other team members to share something that's happened to them in the last sprint that they're looking to see if anyone else has shared that experience. Anyone who has... Um, taken a day off anyone who has maybe you can do something more vulnerable or anyone who's uh, broken the build or anyone who's deployed or brought down production in the last two, two weeks uh, that's more of a test but it's again a, a way to help newer teams start that and, and Lency only talked about something called heavy lifting newer te new teams have to do the heavy lifting of team forming a lot more 
than more mature teams. But there's never seen as you know, that much time to spend on the heavy lifting parts of team formation, team building. So some of those safety games are there to kind of hotwire that, that safety element and really expose something we're not particularly good at, something we're not particularly proud of. Um, I know Jeff, my friend Jeff Watts in his latest book, Team Mastery, talks about the idea of a user manual. So basically, here, this is me. I'm a member of your team now, and I don't like these things. These things are really going to annoy me. But equally, these are things that I do that are really going to annoy you as a team member. And that's quite a nice way for you to introduce yourselves as new team members, um, because it's getting some of your annoying habits out on the table. I'm likely to do this at some point during the week. I don't like early mornings. You know, I'm generally going to be grumpy first thing. I don't do, you know, I'm gen I can be um, quite late for the first for the daily stand up and just just helping teams learn that, that human element about each other, I think is um, anything game based that you can do to introduce that is going to be a, a positive thing and making making it more playful rather than just doing it to judge. Does that help? Great. Okay. Yeah, that that great. That's good. Thank you. No worries. Any other questions? It seems not. So. Well, you had some uh, you had games that are recommended for each uh, ceremony do you have something for review with stakeholders no that's the, i suppose that's the maybe the, the the fourth in the installment three th obviously three is a good trilogy isn't it and then i picked um daily St i started with daily stand-up which is um which is an obvious one for you want to increase listening and engagement because you've only got a few minutes Retrospectives was a bit of a, a bugbear of mine. Teams not really talking about their emotions and sprint planning. I always saw as a as a creative one. Um, yeah, reviews. Yeah, I'm not sure what what the right type of game would be for a review. Maybe it's about giving feedback or uh, that kind of thing about being honest um, with each other and uh, honesty and feedback. But yeah, maybe maybe there's a fourth game. I need to come up with a fourth one, Ray. Maybe that's. <laughs> the next watch this space but what i was planning to do is certainly the uh, the three existing decks um will have um at some point they'll have expansion packs so yeah there'll be more games coming as, as i think of them as i write them down there might be a space there because uh, there are teams who actually have psychological safety and would like to play among the team members but then when there are several teams and we still need to collaborate and stakeholders and management everyone is getting a little bit, you know, scared of these things. So maybe yeah. there is a space. I think yeah. Yeah, certainly sprint reviews because there's likely to be um, non-team members or kind of stakeholders. And perhaps it's a way of trying to, you know, uh, games is a great way to try and bring some of those stakeholders more into that kind of team ethos. And certainly about giving um, feedback and receiving feedback. Oh, I like it. Okay, so do we have some other questions or maybe it's a good time for our lottery? Alexander, are you there? Yes, I'm there. I'm just waiting if someone had some question, but everyone is quiet, so we can start with the lottery. So I will start sharing my screen right now. Just give me a second, please. And that's... close mine down, it's easier. Okay. There you go. Okay, just one second, please. Share screen. Okay. So do you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Everything okay? So we can start with the first. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Come on. Oh, it's exciting. This is very exciting. It's like it's like a proper game show. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Ivana, Ivana is winner. Ivana, congratulations. 
Well done, Ivana. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I'm with myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Paul. It was very, very great presentation. Right. I typed it in the chat, but it's really interesting. I'm a, I was thinking about well, which of the three, well, which of the four decks would you like to to try out, Ivana? Which would would you have? Well, I don't have to come to me now, but have a think about it before we and come I'll, back. To I'll, maybe I'll think about it. Yeah, maybe they'll stand up for now, but I'll think about it. Thanks. Okay. Okay, Ivana, thank you. So we can start with the second winner. Okay, one, two, three, come on. So it's Tiana, congratulations. Well done, Tiana. Thank you. And now we can start with the third one. We have to repeat this one because <laughs> Diana is once again. Diana, you are very lucky. A very lucky person. Okay. Okay, let's repeat just one second. One, two, three. Come on. Yeah. And then Sandbirds, congratulations. Well done. Well so done. that would be bad. You're welcome. Yeah, so all I need to know um, for the for those three lucky winners is you will need to have an account on the app. So make sure you've downloaded it. Um, you can find it on the app, app, Apple Store. You can find it on the Google Play Store. Um, I'll just need your email address. And once I've got your email address that you've logged your account with, I can give you your free uh, deck of your choosing. Okay, guys. So any final thoughts, feedback, anything? would like to share with us yeah, as i say um thanks very much it's great to um as i put in the chat you know hear about the the psychology behind the game so it's interesting to understand why and when and how they're used and i might try i might try one next week <laughs> i've got some very staid academics i'm going to try one with them it's always a risk it's always a risk very good you gotta do it Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. That was uh, interesting, insightful, and uh, inspiring. So, a few things written down to try out. Definitely, thanks. Great, thanks, Maya. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I just need to get the details of the three winners. But I'm, can I leave that with you, Alexander? Do you need to want to drop me an email, or or do you want to do it in the chat window, private message? I'm not sure how you want to do it, but. Okay, uh, Paul, we will send you uh, the names and all That's the information fine. about them on mail, so don't worry. That's great. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone, for attending our meetup, and uh, hopefully see you next month. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Great to see you all. Thank okay, you. guys. Thank you so much. Bye Spend bye. the night. Take care. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.